Hey folks, it's Emily. I got a short and juicy one for you today, courtesy of AR Community Member Bamboo, who is so very hardcore. She's always finding really interesting new information. She shared this press release on our Discord, which if you're like me, the first thing you think is who are these guys? I looked into it. They're a branch of the UN, just so you know where this is coming from. And the second thing you would think is, what's with this temporarily? Like, what would make us think we're going to get comfortably back under 1.5C in the next five years? Would it be our total lack of sufficient societal level action? But I digress. This is a press release. So of course, it's written in a kind of massaged way. I was like, I want the real report. Give me the numbers. So I got it and I read it. Let's go look over there. So here's the cover of the PDF. You can see that it's short and it's got the real news. Let's look at the bullet points that haven't been massaged. Maybe we'll zoom in enough that we can read it. So these are the bullet points that haven't been massaged for press release. These are the bullet points that are for communicating between different meteorological societies. Where we see the global mean near surface temperature for each year between 24 and 28 is predicted between 1.1 and 1.9 C higher than the pre-industrial average. So this is some important information here. It means that we're unlikely to exceed 2 C as an average by 2028. So we got a little bit of runway there. And it means that it's not at all off the table, that we could be brushing up against 1.9C, brushing really close to 2C in the next four years. I think this second bullet point is also very important, that it's as likely as not that the five-year mean will exceed the 1.5C threshold. I zoomed over to page seven so you could see that prediction visually here. I think this is an interesting visualization style that they're using for this next four year period. Folks, I think it's likely this isn't a shocker to any of us that we are over that 1.5 C threshold right now, but it is important to note it and to see it in this world facing document. We're over that 1.5 C threshold. Here's a quick view of the Copernicus Institute's May update. So here again, we're talking not about projections, we're talking about what's happening now, where that temperature average for May of 2024 has come down to 1.52 C over the pre-industrial average. That's still very serious, but it's the sort of thing where at least you're glad it's not going back up. Both the projections and where we are now mean that we can't afford to indulge in this fantasy being painted in press releases that this is a temporary setback and probably will be fine if we don't use plastic straws. We're in a weird and serious place. It's time to get weird. And we can see that by looking at this fun bit of information in the WMO report regarding AMOC. Let's go back to those bullet points on page two. So there's a lot to get in here in this report. I would encourage you to dig in yourself, but these are the areas that really jumped out at me. Predicted precipitation patterns, not just for 2024, but out to 2028. Looks like we're seeing the Brazil and Sahel hotspots of change that would be consistent with big changes in the North Atlantic related to AMOC, right? And same thing, they're predicting cyclone activity out to 28 related to long-term projected North Atlantic changes. Again, that's probably related to AMOC and its potential collapse. I think the fact that they're stating the hurricane outlook years in advance being high is very interesting. Let's go over to page 13 of the report and look into those precipitation projections. So this is a cool report. It shows multiple models. And here we're looking at the ensemble mean forecast for 24 to 28. Coming down here to precipitation, if it's crosshatched, it means that there's more uncertainty, which makes it extra disturbing that where we have more certainty is this extreme precipitation climb right around the equator. These are the kind of precipitation shifts, big shifts right around the equator that we would be expecting in a destabilized AMOC situation. There's a lot to read in this figure here. I'm loving the relatively mild colors, the relatively mild precipitation anomalies projected over North America. But that's a small global bright spot compared to what we're seeing over the Mediterranean there, let alone the very concerning reality of these drought signals for South America and for South Africa down there. The signals for increased precipitation over the Sahel in the middle of Africa, those are very interesting. There are so many people in Africa who have been working on soil quality in the Sahel. That's an important moment emerging for this place. But let's stay on task here. You'll see if you look through this report, they share other models for precipitation, but that there is pretty good agreement that this is a big shift projected for the Sahel and that for everyone in North America, our level of precipitation weirdness appears to be 
pretty moderate. I'm going to try and stay focused on AMOC. For that, we got to drive into the appendix on page 25. So this is very interesting to me. We see AMOC is projected to decline, but the authors of the report don't know exactly how. They're very open about the fact that they don't have enough observations going backwards to project forward very well. Whenever you see a decline projection beyond a point of decline we've ever seen, that says a lot. That's how scientists say something is getting weird. They show you we're going off into the unknown and they expect you to draw your own conclusions from that. They don't come out and say it in a press release. So here's what I take away from this whole report. Not the press release information that this is a temporary problem. I take away, we need to be serious about 1.5C. It looks to me like our current conditions are sticking around and that we definitely need to take seriously a shortened timeline to 2C. We're probably not talking about 2C at 2050 if it's already coming onto the table by 2028. We don't know when 2C is coming, but if we've got an in probability chance of brushing up to 1.9, not as an average mean, but in these projections, you could easily have a summer brushing 1.9 by the end of 2028. We gotta be taking resilient steps now. We need to toughen up for 2C because that first 2C summer is gonna take out a lot of people who aren't prepared. And that sucks and it's the reality that we're living in. If you're a person who feels like you're alone, that you see very serious writing on the wall, and then you read stuff like in that press release where it's designed to calm you down, it can make you feel kind of gaslit. I was excited to see this serious report, this very technical report that gives us some clearer inklings of the timeline we're really facing. This technical report, it looks like they're saying it's not likely we'll exceed 2C by 2028. So I see that, I'm like, I got some runway, I'm gonna work this problem. And I see that this is a resource, I wanna stay on top of it. This is an annual update I wanna see on the regular. Let's keep our eyes open and keep getting more clear information on the table as we work on building a timeline in this time of great change. I'm always so impressed by the resources the community finds. Thanks again, Bamboo, for setting me down this good trail. Let's keep learning and let's get ready. Thanks. Thanks for watching. And I want to thank everyone in the AR community for your contributions. They're keeping this nonprofit rolling and growing. If you want to donate, there's a link on the about page of our YouTube channel or on the top bar of our website, www.americanresiliency.org. I'm very grateful to our donors, to our volunteers, to everyone spreading the word online, and especially to everyone doing the work on the ground. As a special note, I'm on the lookout for a solid climate data set for Mexico. I think more and more of us are wanting a Mexico overview. If you've got a lead, email me at ar at americanresiliency.org. Thanks for getting ready with me and talk with you again soon.